We're going to go again into 1 Corinthians chapter 12 because I want to um, <coughs> finish off what I was sharing in the last class. And there we did the pie chart sort of thing. beach ball. Everything around us, and yet there's a center focal point. And I really believe that <clears throat> 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and 13 is preparing us for this reality. <clears throat> Sadly, having been around spirit-filled, charismatic people most of my Christian life, <clears throat> I have heard this 12th chapter quoted over and over again um, with one purpose, and that is to teach that we all can have different gifts and we're all special. When in reality, and, 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 and by the way, you all can have different gifts, and you're all special. <clears throat> yes, I knew that you would. I knew. <laughs> I knew that you would feel warm and fuzzy over me saying that. So, <clears throat> some of you are more fuzzy than others. But anyway, <clears throat> so, uh, however, and I'll, I, I want to set about to to show this. First uh, Corinthians chapter twelve. In verse 4, we did notice a few things, but we want to move on through this chapter. Verse 4, now there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. <clears throat> and it is going to say the same Lord and the same Father, but I want you to know that throughout this whole thing, <clears throat> it is trying to communicate to us that there are differences. There are differences of administrative differences of operation, differences of... Um, uh, manifestations, differences of gifts, differences of offices. This whole deal is talking about differences, but the same, and one of the reoccurring phrases over and over, the same spirit. And now, let's, let's be clear about this. It's talking about us being one body, though many members having the same spirit, the body, us all together, having the same spirit. Okay, well, that's Christ. I mean, you, that's the Holy Spirit, but the Holy Spirit comes to reveal Christ in you as life. The Holy Spirit is not your life, by the way. Jesus is your life. And so <clears throat> saying that, I want you to see if you can follow that theme that he is at first <clears throat> going through and he's very much trying to point out differences, that there are differences of things, but that we, the, the unifying, the focal point, the, the, the central truth is we all have the same nature, the same spirit, without which the individual members will rebel and attack one another. Do you, you understand? In other words, you know, there is no unifying factor except the life of Christ. Or you could say it like this. There is no unifying factor except Christ. Well, everybody would go, amen. But what they think that means is <clears throat> that Jesus will bring us into unity by causing us to get along. Why can't we all just get along? Well, I'll tell you why. If it's not Christ, we're never going to get along. We'll get along for a while. But there will always be something. Are you listening? There will always be something that you don't like or someone you don't like or some program you don't like or something like that, and I understand that. I mean, I think we're all that way, but there has to be a unifying factor. For all members, 
regardless of gifts, regardless of office. Is this making sense? Ah, so with that in mind. <clears throat> now there are diversities, yet the same spirit. And there are differences, but the same Lord. <clears throat> and um, let's see. And diversities of operations, but the same God, who worketh all in all. For to one, meaning individuals, to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom. To another, meaning diversity, differences, different members. To another, <clears throat> uh, the word of knowledge, but the same Spirit. Now, why would he keep repeating that? And he'll do it two more times in the next verse, just the next verse. Why would he keep doing that if he's trying to just teach us that, to one is given the word of wisdom, to another knowledge, to another faith, to another gifts of healing, uh, to another working of miracles. <clears throat> Why, if the theme is that God just gives you gifts, gives you something, but he might give you something different. It's almost like Christmas. We're all going to get something. It's going to be different. But you better not get something better than me or I'm going to be jealous over what you get. You following? <clears throat> so he ha so he's, he knows where he's going, though they may not at this stage. <clears throat> um, for to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom. To another, the word of knowledge. By the same Spirit. That's what it says right here. Next verse, to another faith by the same Spirit. To another, the gifts of healings by the same Spirit. He's trying to show that there are differences, but there's one thing that's the same for everybody. It's the core factor. It's not one of the pieces of the pie. It is the central thing that ties, that every piece touches. And it's central to every piece. <clears throat> all right. Um, verse 11, but all these worketh that one and the very same spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. <clears throat> now, to show you that, th that this is his theme in this chapter, <clears throat> he has already spelled it out. But he's going he's to keep carrying this. Why? Okay, because the Apostle Paul is setting up churches everywhere he goes in many different countries, and everywhere he goes, he finds problems. You say, well, how do you know that? Well, read the letter to the Galatians. Read the letter to the Ephesians. Read the letter to the Corinthians. Read the, you see what I'm saying? There, there's, he's dealing with problems, different problems, but always dealing with people and always dealing with people who have not yet come to the central focus. We use the term the revelation of Christ. Well, <laughs> I mean it is. It's true and it's scriptural and everything else, but we'll, we'll make something else out of that so that we can divide ourselves from everybody. That's just wrong. It's the very opposite of what that spirit carries with it. The revelation of Christ. The, rev the unveiling of Christ and he's unveiled, he's known in his body, us. <clears throat> and so, um, so he's going to start another direction to show that. And verse 12 starts with four. So why would it start with four as the body? Why would it start with four? It starts with that because he's going to talk about it. Let me read it. For as the <coughs> body is one... Because we are the container of this life. He's in the center of us. He's in the center of, he's, in, he's the central being in the new Jerusalem. The bride of Christ. The body of Christ. He's not walking alongside her. He is seated on the throne of her being in the central core of who she is. To whom 
be glory forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. <clears throat> and so, so he says, for, see, clearly this is not about the gifts. He's using that, and then he uses offices, and he uses different things. <clears throat> but he's trying to, everywhere he goes, he's trying to teach believers that you must know the central core of all things. You must know from whence everything was made. And, you know, what, what does it say? That, <clears throat> you know, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Always, you know, the Lord gave me a picture of that, you know, a long time ago, a long time ago. <laughs> it was like, okay, in the beginning right here is God. And he created all things, and so all this goes out from him, and there's this all this creation. But then Jesus is crowned king and lord and everything, and he delivers up the father of the, the kingdom to the father so that God will be all in all. Not just Christ any longer being all in all. Christ is all in all to the body. God is all in all to the being. <clears throat> it's the only way I know how to put it. And so all of this came out, all, just myriad, and, 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 you know, think of the universe. <clears throat> and the minutest things in, in quantum physics and quantum particles, and it all came out from one. In the beginning, God created. But then, in the end, it all comes back. And it's not 80 billion things anymore. It's one. But three in one. And you could almost say four in one. Don't make heresy out of that. Just understand that we are one with one of the ones. <laughs> you get it? <laughs> We're one with Jesus. Therefore, what is true of him relates to us but only by virtue of oneness with him because of him and to him and through him is all things and by him all things consist and that has to be reality to us not not just not just creation reality but living reality knowing that without you I can do nothing now Jesus said that to us when he said, I am the vine, you're the branches. Without me, you can do nothing. <clears throat> and I remember in my younger days reading that and going, well, he didn't really mean that then. <laughs> he meant when it comes to the real God stuff. But as I've grown, I've realized that, that he wants me so absorbed into him <clears throat> so uh, I'm thinking of the Borg right now so assimilated into him that while it is one collective that's what he's talking about here it's only one life and nature Christ in you the hope of glory to whom be glory and honor. How much, how much, you know, every Christian says, I want to bring God glory. I want to bring God honor. Well, they're waiting for some big missionary event or some big thing that's going to happen when in reality, every day of your life, in little things that add up to big things because quantum particles make the biggest of everything that's big. Little things add up to big things. <clears throat> and you realize that in this situation I'm in right now, I can choose to go with what I want or my flesh or me throwing a fit or, I, you know, I don't know. I can, I can, or I can lovingly and happily choose Christ. Because I want to. Now, 
you know, the, the key there is it has to be a willing sacrifice. If you're not will, you know, I mean, I, I say this to, I've said this all along, but I'll say it again. If you're not willing, I'm not talking to you. If, you're, if you want to live for self, don't wait 10 years down the road, throw a big, big fit, and then start accusing us of all sorts of stuff. Leave now and be happy. No, I've, and I've said, guess what? A couple of people been here for, well, we've got quite a few been here a long time. Have I ever said that before? Anybody ever heard me say that? Uh, and some of the people that are presently upset heard those very things. Well, they, they waited 10 years and then... <laughs> don't, you know, don't let it be a burr in your saddle. If it's not willing, if it's not in you, if it's not a part of who you are, if it's not a part of what you want to become, then go out and just do whatever you want. Man, just do it and have fun doing it. Because... Some of us here have chosen this, and we're actually having fun doing it. <laughs> we actually like it. I, I mean, you know, there's junk that goes on, but if you really, really, if you really want to know the truth, there's really no other place I'd rather be. I mean, I get to travel a lot, and I'm in different places, and I'm not, I'm not young anymore where I look at that and go, you know, see the externals and go, oh, this is such a happy place. Everybody, I know what's in all me. You know what I mean? And, and here, many of you have taken up the cross. You have gone through things in an effort to be conformed to the image of Christ. And I don't know anywhere else I'd rather be in truth. In truth. As far as with the body of believers. <clears throat> so, you know, I'm here. I, I'm, I'm here. And that's what needs to happen with every person. All right, so let's go on. For as the body is one, because that's the one thing, and Christ is the one within it, and hath many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body. Isn't that funny that he would say it like that? Listen to it again. And all the members of that one body, being many, are one body. All the members of that one body, being many, are one body. Well, you just said that before. Why are you saying it not even in the next sentence, but you skip, what, two words and then you say it again? Because this is his point. You have diversities. You have different gifts. You have different calling. You have different administrators. You have different ways of operating. You have different um, um, offices and different things like that. But we all have Christ and the Christ we have is not just the one seated on the throne far, far away. It is the one who is seated within us. The Lamb of God. The Lamb of God. The Lamb of God. All right. <clears throat> For, you see, he started the last verse with that. Apparently, he's trying to carry on a theme here. For by one Spirit, <laughs> can you believe how much he's saying this? For by one Spirit were we all baptized into one body. He is continually going to this central point, this primary core, this <clears throat> uh, mother of all theories, if you will, of quantum theories. It is the minutest particle and the great, he is the length and the breadth and the height and the, and the greatest reach of everything. And so <clears throat> Paul has seen that. I mean, I remember when I was in Bible school, I think that's when I saw it. And before I came to Bible school and then for, you know, a while in Bible school, man, I just wanted to take the world for Jesus. And I mean, I just wanted, and I just, I, I looked at the book of Acts and different things and I said, this is it. This is, you know, taking the world for Jesus is what it's all about. <clears throat> and then the more I read Paul's letter, I realized that he was the same way when he first began. He started preaching Jesus, the Messiah. 
Jesus, he's a Messiah for a small little country out of all the whole globe, a small little country and a small group of people. He's the Messiah, little tiny Messiah, but he's the one for that. But then the more Paul knew him, he began to speak of this one who is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the length, the breadth, the height and the depth. The, it is the fullness that filleth all in all. And I saw that the, the walls of his mind and of his comprehension were kicked out by the Holy Spirit. And this one-time reality of a little Messiah for a small little group in a little place, Paul comprehended him as everything that God ever had in mind. Just and he just, you know, oh, the, the depths of both the, you know, I mean, he just, he just stopped. He's writing and then he's talking about it and he just stops. He goes, oh, the depths, both of the, you know, it, he's just overwhelmed with the reality of Christ. I mean, how many of you, when's the last time you got overwhelmed with the reality of Christ? I mean, overwhelmed to realize he is so much bigger than what I had in mind. I, you know, and the, you, one of the first words comes out of your mouth is, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. Not, not in some sort of self-deprecating way, but just a reality. Lord, I am sorry that I kept you in this little box when you are so much more than what I could ever have comprehended. And I am sure that you're still beyond that. Uh, this would have been a good time for me to bring a few little tidbits where I would prove that how the uh, universe is expanding. <coughs> because it is. Physically, the actual universe is expanding. And I, I can prove it with a rubber band. And if I remember to bring it next time, I'll show you. Well, that makes perfect sense, doesn't it? Our, our Jesus is beyond the borders of anything we could, there, and there are no borders to him. What's on the other side of the border that's not him? There are no. And so our understanding is just going out in greater measure of the fullness that is Christ. And we can only explore to whatever degree that light has been blown out. I won't explain that right now, but you, but you can't explore the unknown universe. You can only explore the edges of it at this stage, at this stage. And in reality, because in reality, you can't, you can't know the Lord beyond the light that you have. It's just that simple. <clears throat> All right. I am not going to do very well tonight. Okay. Um, verse 13. For by one spirit were we all baptized into one body, whether we be... You, 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 are you getting it? Now he's saying... He's not saying gifts. He's not saying offices. Now he's saying whatever your cultural background is, we were all baptized by one spirit into one body, and, and that doesn't matter what the differences are, whether we be Jews or Greek, whether we be bond or free. Uh, we and have been all made to drink into one spirit. See, he didn't really just say one body. The body contains the spirit. The core truth is not the body it's it's just like a it's just like a, an atom <clears throat> if if this were an atom you know and you could hold an atom in your hand and make it life size that atom might represent the body but the atom itself is actually made up of other particles three other particles interesting three and all of that forms one larger picture. Okay? <clears throat> so that's what he's trying to explain here. Verse 14, For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, 
because I am not the hand, I am not of the body. And there's the key. <clears throat> he keeps pointing out of the body because this body is, just like the atom, is the body of the subatomic particles. And it goes deeper than that, and it goes deeper than that, and it goes deeper than that. And we talked about it one class, so I don't want to, <clears throat> but that's because there are depths and depths and depths and depths until we find the true core, and that's what I'm trying to, trying to do right now. <clears throat> um, so if the, if the foot says, well, I'm not of the body, so you didn't say I'm not of God. You're saying I'm not of the container that holds the core? Are you saying you're not of the container that holds the core? Is that what you're saying? Because <laughs> if you are, it can't be. Now, if you're saying you don't get along with everybody in this body, well, who does? And if you're saying you don't, you know, you don't get along with your denomination, well, that's fine. But if you're saying you're not of the vehicle that holds the core, you are jeopardizing everything, but you're not jeopardizing anything because he says, is, if it says it's not, is it therefore not? No. You're still in Christ. You're still one with Christ. You're still the body of Christ. Well, I did something today I should never have done. Well, amen. Come up here and I'll give you a few swats and maybe you'll feel better. Get over it and get after Jesus. Now, see, that's recorded and everybody's going to think that that's what I do. So, is it? I can't win for losing. But nonetheless, <clears throat> my point being of using an example that we never do around here is... <clears throat> is... That you need to get over the things quickly and get back on the trail. And the trail is the Lord. You can spend a month or a year wallowing in your, you know, self-pity or issues or whatever. You can spend that long. Or you can just get up, go to Jesus, say, Lord, forgive me. Father, forgive me. I'm one. I believe your word. Christ is my life. By, by your grace forming Christ in me, <clears throat> I will not do it again, but there's a good chance I will until he's formed in me. I'm still with you. Are you with me? And you're going, don't, don't need to answer. I know. I know what your answer is, Father. Because you say you're not of the body. Are you not? No. You are one and you contain the core, and you need to get to the core issue, not issues, core issue. <clears throat> All right, so, by one spirit, we were all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Greeks, whether we be bond or free, and have all been made to drink into one spirit, one spirit, one spirit. Has it not the same, the same spirit? Have you been hearing that over and over again? <clears throat> So then, uh, verse 16, And if the ear shall say, Because I am not the eye, I am not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? Is it therefore not of the one? Is it not the container of the one? And the answer again, no. That's ridiculous. Well, if the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? And if the whole were hearing, where are the smelling? So he's talking about the whole but the whole really has become one in Christ and by Christ. In union with Christ, therefore it's by Christ because of the union. <clears throat> it, um, but in verse 18, but now hath God set the members, every one of them, in the body. Isn't that an interesting way of saying that? <laughs> Because he could have said something different. He could have said, now God has saved you all, and you're all special to him. But he's linking you to the core and the container for the core, the Lamb of God, Christ in you. Okay? 
So that's why he specifically says that. To set the members in the body for safekeeping. One with Christ, you're safe. Anybody believe in assurance? Anybody have some assurance? Do you have it when you go through stuff? Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Well, blessed more assurance, you're his. Um, and verse 19, and if they were all one member, where uh, were the body? <coughs> um, but now are they many members, but yet one body. Now, how many times do you think he's going to keep saying this? I mean, he has just really been pressing this thing that I don't care about your diversities. Yes, there are diversities, but there's one thing that makes you one. And that's the core Christ nature makes you one in the sense of you are united to the core. Everything else is expendable. <clears throat> and the eye cannot say, and, and so and all of it, here's what you're getting from this. Well, the, the hand can, you know, if the hand shall say, if the ear shall say, and, and uh, you know, there's a couple more there. Now he says, if the eye says this to the hand, you know, or this member says this to that member, he's showing, he's showing that God-given gifts God empowerment for every member still isn't enough. Because what are they doing? They're dividing over it. They're literally making divisions over godly things given to them. Now this all gets to the heart of dark energy and dark matter. And we'll, we'll get to that at another time. But this, this is the whole thing going on in that, that reality. <clears throat> he is showing that this isn't, um, this isn't some secular thing that's dividing the people of God. He's saying the very heart of God to give you gifts, to give, to give you an office to serve him, to minister to him, that in itself is no different than a secular thing when it comes to how we handle it. We still divide. We still divide. Well, if I'm not the I am, I'm not the I am. You're the I and I'm just a foot. So what are you? I'm not the I am. You know, one of them is self-pity and the other one is, is self-righteousness. This, this one, I mean, it is. There's two categories here, and if you get a chance to look at it, the self-pity ones are going, well, if I'm not the I am, then I'm just a foot. I'm, then am I of the body? And the other one is, uh, verse 21, if the I cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. You see that? One's in self-pity, the other one's in self-righteousness. They're both in self. I don't care what label you put after it. It's self. And therefore it's not Christ because Christ is not self-centered. He's the only being that's not self-centered, self-focused, self-concerned or occupied. How about that? Self-occupied. You know, He's the only one that's not. I mean, I had to come to that realization, and I had to realize I'll never measure up. I'll never be this because we're all this way. Everybody's this way except Jesus. And therefore, he offers oneness with him through the cross and by the resurrection. So I raised my hand and said, Jesus, can I have some of that? And he said, yes, you can. Yes, you can. Jesus, can I come to you on the water? Jesus said, come. I love that. He didn't say, well, or, well, sure, but 
you know, you, you know, or yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, come, come. Because if your heart is always to come to Jesus, not to walk on water, then he'll, he'll bid you come. It's when your motive is to walk on water that you, he's not even going to say come. Because <clears throat> you're not coming. You're paddling around, you know, all over the lake. I'm over here. I don't, yeah, but I'm too busy. You know? <laughs> yeah. Look what I can do, guys in the boat. Lily livered chicken, gutless, spineless brothers. I am paddling on the water. Yeah. <clears throat> well, it's, it's like a gift. You may even be able to get out there and paddle around for a while, but as soon as you see a storm, you start getting self-survival, starts kicking in, and then you look to self, you go down. A gift, a healing, a blessing, a miracle, none of those things are the core that holds it all together. Are they unimportant? No, they're important. They're blessings. Thank God for them. But picture, picture, if you will, if you were a pastor of a church, would you want people to get all this stuff and yet eventually rip each other to shreds? No, you wouldn't want that. You would say, God, show me the thing that will unite us all, wouldn't you? I mean, because you know you would stand before God as those who must give an account for the souls of people. Am I right or wrong? That's the scripture. That's what it says. So you would be real. You would take everything seriously. And you would, when you would see that God blessed the church with gifts and miracles and revival and everything, and then everybody eventually went back and started ripping and tearing one another, you'd go, well, that must not be the central, the focus, the thing. And you start digging deeper until you find the thing that holds it all together. And you will never be satisfied until you find it. And then until everyone else finds it, because what's the point? What's the point? I mean, if you were a pastor, you would say that. You would say, what's the point? I don't, I'm not, you know, I don't want to play at this anymore. You, pastors get burned out all the time. You know why? Because they're working hard trying to get peripherals, trying to get things on the circumference to do what only finding the core will do. Yes? Amen. Yeah, I've got that written here. I'm probably not going to make it very far today. <clears throat> the worst thing I could possibly do is sit with my Bible open like this because I'll just start going, you know, and there's no stopping me. See? So you're always safer if I start reading because we'll actually make some progress here. <clears throat> All right. So um, notice verse 23, and those members of the body, which we think to be less honorable, I, you know, I still don't believe I've seen what God has in mind for these scriptures, okay? I really don't believe that I have. I'm waiting. There are many scriptures like that that I don't have any clue. Well, I have a clue what everybody says they mean, but my, something within my being says this says something different than we're trying to make that scripture say, okay? And one of the things that, that clues me to that is when he says, the way he's been talking up to this point. And then he says, and those members of the body, of the body, for God, for our comely parts have no need, but God hath tempered the body together. There's something more than just <clears throat> what we see in those scriptures. And I know that. Because his issue is still the body, the, one, the thing that makes us one, or the vehicle of oneness. The thing that makes us one is Christ. The vehicle of that is the body of Christ. Okay? <clears throat> um, 
So he's, he hasn't left his theme. But we leave the theme, and then we start going, well, this, does this mean I need to be kind to mean people? You know, that's, is, that, is that what that's about? Because I don't want to be kind to mean people. I want to be mean to mean people. That would make you a mean person, and therefore uncomely. <laughs> anyway, let's go. Uh, verse um, uh, 25. Well, let's go to 24. For our comely parts have no need, but God hath tempered the body together. See, he's te this is not about comely or uncomely members. This is about the body being tempered together, and whatever that means. Having given more abundant honor to the part which lacked that, there shall be no schism in the body or divisions in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. Did you catch that? The same care. That's the same little phrase that he used all along, except for his same spirit, same, same spirit, same body. One spirit, one body. He keeps, he keeps harping on that. He's been doing it for 25 verses. And, and so when it gets to this point, he says um, that the real issue is that we all have the same care by the same nature. Okay? It's not about getting along. It's about getting to the core, which is the nature, which is the lamb, which is the selflessness, which is self-giving, and that will hold us together when nothing else will. Now, we've proven that around here. I mean, there have been a million reasons for people to leave or get upset or whatever, and, you know, um, I remember joking with Scott a long, long time ago, and I said, well, will, will you go away also? And he said, God put me here. This is where I'm supposed to be. This is, this is it, you know? I don't want to be where God doesn't, didn't put me. <laughs> you know? I mean, that is scary isn't it? <laughs> to be somewhere where, uh, you know, well, it's a better place. Are you sure you want to be there without Jesus? See, a better place. You can't get a better Jesus. But you can depart from where God has placed you and therefore, you know, have problems based on that, that issue. All right, so <clears throat> verse 27, Now ye are the body of Christ, and members in particular, and God hath set some in the church, first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healing, help, governments, diversities of tongues, are all apostles. No, that's, that's a, what's it called? What kind of question is that? Um, rhetorical question. Are all apostles? No, they're not. Are all the prophets? No, they're not. Are all teachers? No. Are all workers of miracles? No. Have all the gifts of healing? No. Do all speak with tongues? No. And this is not talking about receiving the Holy Spirit. This is talking about the gift of tongues, if you stay with the context. Do all interpret? No. But covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet show I unto you a more excellent way. All right. So, if, if you... All right. Here's my picture. I've got my circle, and I've got my center point. So we've got the body, and we've got in our pie one particular piece, apostles and prophets and evangelists and teachers. And, you know, you got, okay, so you got diversities, right? Okay. Or you got healing and, what are, you know, what is governments and helps and, and diversities of tongues and... Um, uh, different things like that. He's pointing out, he's come to a conclusion, he's taken a long time to spell out that all of those things will never unify anybody, any church. It will never unify people. It might for a while, but people are people unless it's Christ. I mean, it's that simple. People are people. You are a people if it's not Christ. <laughs> That's why the Spirit came to reveal Christ. Well, can you imagine Jesus telling Peter, James, and John, and the other 12, now the Holy Spirit's going to, because that's who he's talking to. God 
was he wasn't talking to big multi. He's talking to those guys. Uh, now, when the Spirit comes, he's going to reveal me to you, or you could say he's going to reveal Jesus to you. And what would what would they say? Oh, we already know Jesus. We've been walking with him for three and a half years. If anybody knows Jesus, we do. We know Jesus. We know the way he sleeps. We know how he ministers to the poor. We know how he does this and that. We know stuff you'd never know. Jesus drools sometimes when he's sleeping. <laughs> Did you know that? No, I didn't know that. Knowing that he drools or doesn't isn't the knowing <laughs> that God wants you to know. Knowing how to minister or how he ministers so that you can copy him. Makes you a copycat, not a son of God. So Jesus said, look, you haven't, even, you haven't really begun yet. Until the Holy Spirit starts revealing me, who my, my, my way as opposed to yours, my selflessness as opposed to you, you're going to get everything you can from me, every gift, every office. You're going to become famous. You're going to become a big shot. You're going to do all this stuff, and you're going to be just the opposite of me. You're going to be what I hate instead of what I love. All right. But Paul goes, so he's, he's proven that, and now he goes, but wait. I want to show you a more excellent way. Try telling that to some charismatic church. That there is an actually better way. This is good. This is God. But it's not him. It's his stuff. It's his gifts. It's his offices. It's his blessings. You follow him? It's all of God. But being of God is not enough. I thought it was. Anybody here think it was at one time? I thought it was enough to be of God. I'm of God. Yes. And so, how much time we got left? About five minutes? Really? Okay, well, I may end up stopping here. <clears throat> but I want to, before I go into 1 Corinthians 13, next time I share, um, I want you to see from the writer that God chose to write the Bible where the core issues are. Paul didn't know that automatically and he didn't get it when he got knocked down on the road to Damascus. He didn't. He didn't get it there. In fact, that's where if you check it out and read it in the book of Acts, that's where you'll find out he preached Jesus the Messiah. And he did it with all the gusto of the hound dog. I mean, he was into it. But God began to reveal himself deeper. And most of the New Testament is about that core issue. Okay? And particularly, well, I think it all, I think John's writings are, I think Peter is. But I can tell you that Paul is going at this because God is using him to raise up churches. See, some of you, you'll never know that. You'll never know the pressure. You'll never know the feeling. You'll never know. Discouragement will never hit you to the degree of somebody like Paul, yeah. who, is, who is his whole life, his whole being, everything rides on raising people up into the image of Christ. And if they don't get it and if they don't form together, then they're just like people of the world in the sense that they have the same motives. They're out for themselves. They might, they might fight over a Bible instead of a glass of beer. 
but it's the same junk. It's the same junk. <laughs> and and um, this next chapter, he really, 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 really starts just slicing the slicing this bread thin. I mean, he starts really showing that the very things that he emphasized that were of God, the very gifts, the very power, the very knowledge, all of the things that he said covet earnestly the best gifts, he's going to show that in, if you don't have the core thing, it doesn't mean anything. I mean nothing. That's the word that he uses. Nothing. Well, that would make sense if you don't have the, you know, if string theory is it or loop gravity is it, if you don't have the smallest core of quantum particle from which everything else is built, the building block upon which everything is built, then you don't have anything. Does that make sense? No matter, not that it doesn't matter, I'm not talking Texan here. I mean, there, was this, there will be no matter, no things made of matter. <laughs> No matter, because nothing counts. <clears throat> All right. Um, let's uh, let's go ahead and shut down our equipment real quick. <laughs>